Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Fantasy Roundup here on bet.nola.com. I'm Zach Ewing. That is Spencer the Guru Urquhart, and uh, we're here for another week of your questions, your comments, your fantasy concerns, and also our advice as we look back at the week that was, talk about the week to come, waiver wire advice, got to hit those waiver wires tonight, um, DFS advice, and also, Spencer, I just listened to Round Ball Rock, so I'm pumped up for this, uh, but some fantasy basketball rankings as well. Let's get it. Yeah, I'm excited, man. You know, we got, of course, football hot and heavy at midway point, you know, week seven. I'm going in this is hell week, man, because all these bye weeks, you know, the, all these teams on bye week, the Vikings, Rams, Eagles, and Bills all on bye. But at least we got fantasy basketball to talk about. And, of course, all the waiver wire additions for this week because y'all gonna need them with all these studs out yeah and it seems like it's especially a problem at receiver the teams you mentioned cooper cups out stefan diggs is out justin jefferson's out um it, AJ, AJ brown. brown yeah it, it's it's gonna be um it's it's gonna be kind of gnarly if you especially if you have two of those guys in your lineup uh, by chance maybe maybe they were two of your first three picks and you're really gonna have to figure some things out for this week but like we talk about in the preseason when you're drafting like, you shouldn't shy away from the bye weeks. I don't let that affect me too much. If I happen to pick two guys, you don't want all guys with a week six bye week. But if you if you pick two or a week seven bye week, and it's, okay, well, you, you lose this week, but you have a great team every other week, I, I think we'd all take that trade off. Yeah, that's, that's the situation I'm in in one of my leagues. I've got uh, basically my entire start lineup on bye week. Josh Allen, Justin Jefferson. Allen Robinson that uh, picked up Skoronek for the Rams. It's a two flex league. And then Khalil Shakir on my bench, KJ Osborne on my bench. So even all my bench players are on bye week. And I think one of my running backs was too. So it's just, it's wild. I'm just going to have to piecemeal it together. Got Garrett Wilson, Robert Woods in there. I don't even have a third receiver as of now because <laughs> all, my, all my guys are out. But, you know, just, just take it as uh, I'm in first place in the league. So even if I lose this week, like you said, Zach, small trade-off for what's been a successful team because all those teams on by this week have pretty much been great for fantasy. Exactly, and then you you will get the advantage in the coming weeks when your opponents have to have buys and you've gotten rid of all of yours. So if you punt one week, you punt one week. Uh, we got a question here from Elias, screwed in fantasy with Cup and Josh Allen on buy. I'm going to assume you mean Curtis Samuel, not Debo Samuel, because otherwise you wouldn't really be screwed. Um, but pick two to start. I kind of like Kirk and Dobbs, Spencer. Um, what are you thinking? Hmm, yeah, this, this is interesting. interesting. Uh, I, would, I might I go, go Rondale more, more because, because you know, the, the, the same, same secondary hasn't been, been too good. good. And, and, you know, Hopkins, Hopkins is just coming back. back. Robbie Anderson was just acquired. So I'm thinking I'd go Rondale. And uh, who would I It was Samuel and... Yeah, Curtis, Curtis, he said. said and, oh, yeah, Kirk. Kirk, yeah, I don't know about Curtis because of Heineke. We don't know what kind of chemistry they have. So I go Kirk and Rondale. Yeah, and I'm I'm going um, – I think I'll go Dobbs in that, in that situation. Um, sorry, having just a, a little bit of an audio problem there. Um, I do want to remind you that the Fantasy Roundup is brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. We do have a couple of exciting things for you this week. Special promos just for our listeners. Uh, the first one is if, you if you're if you a new user, you register for a Caesar Sportsbook account and make at least a $5 bet by Friday, you are automatically entered to, for two tickets to the Pelicans home opener Sunday at the Smoothie King Center against the Utah Jazz. Use promo code PELICANSTICKETS or just go to NOLA.com slash PELSTICKS. That's T-I-X. Um, and you are entered with a, just a minimum of a $5 bet by Friday. If you've already signed up for the Caesar Sportsbook app, husband, wife, brother, sister, friend, uh, any of that works, sign them up, get them to make a $5 bet, and they'll be entered for those two tickets. And since you told them about it, it's only fair that they take you to the game then if they win. Um, <laughs> the other one, if you're not interested in the Pelicans, or let's say you live in Baton Rouge or thereabouts, you can do the same thing, and you have actually until next Monday to do this, and you win two tickets to the LSU Alabama game. So enter by October the 24th, make that $5 bet, and you're entered to win two tickets to LSU Alabama, which could end up being a pretty 
darn big game if, if uh, LSU could beat Ole Miss this weekend. Uh, that will be a headliner game just as much as an LSU-Alabama game typically is. Um, a lot of time I'm supposed to go to NOLA. Well, um, you know, you, you, what you do is you invite somebody to go with you who's got a car, and, um, you know, you guys figure it out. We'll figure out parking for you, too. Um, two tickets to the Pelicans game or two tickets to the LSU-Alabama game if you go that route. Uh, that one is promo code LSU tickets or NOLA.com slash LSU tickets. Um, so check that out today. Let us know if you took advantage of that, got your name in the drawing for that, or if you had any trouble, let us know that as well, and we'll figure it out for you. But uh, in the meantime, Spencer, we'll go rolling on. Powered by Caesar Sportsbook, we're going to look at last week's top scorers at each position, as we always do, in week six. Avert your eyes, Saints fans, because it was a big week for the Bengals offense. Right, yeah, Joey Burrow, baby. What a show. I mean, just he, he, you know, he started off kind of slow. You know, it looked like the Saints were getting to him, but he turned up there in the fourth quarter and ended up being the top scorer in QB. Can't say I'm surprised there considering how beat up the Saints are. Name I am surprised at, though, Matt Ryan. Wow, he really kind of turned back the clock there at a big passing day and showing that he, he's not dead yet. You know, he's not as what he once was, but he's, he's still a decent Fantasy option. We'll get to him later for waiver wire pickups and a couple more surprises there: Trevor Lawrence and Marcus Mariota, and of course, no surprise there with Josh Allen. Not as good as he once was, but he's as good once as he ever was. Or one out for Toby <laughs> Keith and Matt Ryan. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't a great scoring week period in fantasy football, um, especially in the running back side. Here's the top running backs: Deion Jackson. He caught like nine passes. That's part of that. And then he actually left the game injured. Um, so I don't know that you want to go running to the waiver wires to pick him up with Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines possibly coming back. Uh, but if you happen to pick up Deion Jackson and start him, that was that was an electric decision. Right, yeah, because he had the 10 catches too, you know, Naheem Hines out. And so he was basically doing it all. He was getting the early downs and the reception. So it'll be interesting to see if either of those two come back, Taylor or Hines, of course, scale back Jackson's workload but if one of them or both out again then of course he'll he'll still be an RB1 the thing is I'm expecting at least Hines for sure should be back because I don't think his concussion was that bad or I think he should be back Taylor though is good they're not sure the severity of his ankle sprain that's a high ankle sprain he might be out again in which case Jackson Jackson could still be pretty good and uh, Ramondre Stevenson another one that's taking advantage of an injured running back, Damian Harris. He's become the workhorse there in New England. And I feel like even when Harris comes back, Stevenson still a must start. And then those other three were the usual suspects. Oh, you're on mute, Zach. Yeah, Eckler, Eckler, McCaffrey, and Leonard Fournette rounding out that top five. Josh asks, he's got three starters with bye weeks. Is Deion Jackson worthy of my third drop? Um... You know, like you said, Spencer Naheem Hines likely coming back. It's that's a tough one though. I don't know who else you have uh, as a possible drop, but I I don't hate the idea of dropping Deion Jackson. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, know, I don't who know who else, else you have, have but, but I'd, I'd consider, consider keeping, keeping him because if if Taylor and Hines or or even if one's out again, you know, he's showing he can run on early downs or catch passes. So unless you have a stacked team. In which case, yeah, don't drop some of your stuff. But if you have some kind of suspect bench players, you know, some of the guys that we'll get to on you got to go, then I'd consider keeping Jackson. Another question uh, from Cameron. He says he's got a claim open to pick Jahan Dotson off waivers and drop KJ Osborne. Wants to keep Eagles defense. Should he cancel the Dotson claim and pick up the Miami D? Um, and then he says, if the Dotson claim goes through, you'd have to drop Hines, Knox, Madison, Dotson or Goff to pick up that defense. It's a six-team team, six-team team league. It's hard to say. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, you know, is is Jared Goff your starting quarterback? Uh, you have another quarterback. I don't hate the idea of yeah, dropping I'd drop Goff. Goff. I'd probably drop Goff. I know it's sixteen teams. Uh, single QB though. I mean, Goff's not too good. And I'd also, I mean, I know the Eagles' defense has been good, but even in a sixteen-team league, I mean, I've I don't think I, I'm in a I'm in a few deep releases, and you can still stream defenses. So I wouldn't be opposed 
to cutting the Eagles defense because if your league's defense settings are like most leagues, it's all about defensive touchdowns, which are very random. Even for a great defense like the Eagles, I just unless your league is more based off a of yard allowed and points allowed, which in case in that case I'd want to keep one strong defense and the Eagles qualify as that. But if you're in the regular settings where the defenses are total crap shoots and I'd say drop them and add dots and and then for uh and then the dolphins you could just drop I guess golf to make sure you have a defense for this week. Yeah, I, you know the Eagles do play a very light schedule down the stretch and so I don't mind the idea of hanging on to them. I, I think I drop golf first because mm-hmm. he seems a little more replaceable. Going back to Josh's question about Deion Jackson is Antonio Gibson. Yeah, yeah. I Hmm. I don't, I don't know, know who I'd cut. Probably, Probably Gibson, Gibson because, because of Brian, Brian Robinson, Robinson and, and uh, uh, McKissick, McKissick still, there. still there. That's uh, it's not going to be much work left over for Gibson, probably. Yeah. So that's that's the guru's answer on that. Moving on to wide receivers again. That Bengals offense, Jamar Chase, huge fourth quarter, um, getting up to thirty-two point two points, and this was really a case of of the cream rising to the top for the receivers here. Um, didn't see a Cooper Cup or a Justin Jefferson, but all five of these guys um, were, were drafted pretty high. Brandon Ayuk finally getting going. Right, right, right. Yeah, the top three, all the usual suspects, you know, top flight, elite wide receiver. Even Michael Pittman, I mean, he's someone that I feel should have been started throughout the most league because he's still, I'd say, a top ten receiver. And then Ayuk was a big surprise. Normally that's Debo up there, but yeah, Ayuk really showed out took advantage of a soft matchup against the Chiefs. And with the 49ers not really having much outside of him, Debo, and Kittle, he should at least be a solid flex moving forward. Yeah, I had a league where I started uh, Jacoby Myers over Brandon Ayuk and luckily still won won the league partly because I had Michael Pittman as well. Um, So made the wrong decision, still came out okay. Tight ends. Uh, Spencer, you were ready to give up on Mike Kosicki, and he said, watch this. Yeah, I mean, I'm still not buying him, but yeah, he definitely had a big week this week. He's uh, just that with the way the Dolphins are, I feel like the, the, the way the offense funnels through Hill and Waddle, I wouldn't count on him moving forward. But all these other ones, I mean, we know Andrews and Kelsey, we know what they do. Kittle, of course, when he's healthy, you got to play him. And it, Robert Tunyon might be a sneaky option because he got a lot of targets this week. With Aaron Rodgers, if he's kind of not – you know, if he's still not trusting his receivers, then Robert Tunyon might be a sneaky PPR play. Absolutely. Um, by the way, the Vikings, you know, we, we talk about what the Dolphins did. The Vikings are 5-1. and one. You can target that defense. Uh, everybody yeah, seems yeah. to be able to throw on that team. And a lot of times the Vikings have the lead, and so they are going to throw. And so that's it's not a bad thing to do to target that D um, going forward. Spencer, your fantasy star, we already talked about him, but for week six is none other than the LSU product, Joe Burrow. Right, right. yeah, I had to go with Joe. Joe. I got, got him in a couple of leagues, leagues, and, and they did, one, one of them was, was kind of close against, against my, my cousins, cousin, but, but Burrow, Burrow just, just – Burrow, I had Chase, Chase too, too, so I could have gone with either one. one. But I went with Burrow, Burrow since, since he had the highest score out of anybody. And, you know, surprising. I mean, he had a nice week, but – Normally, there's somebody that would score like 35, 40, but just kind of a down week overall. Yep, it was. In, in fact, um, I think I had the highest score in one league with like 125 points, which is usually not enough to get that done. Um, but it just everybody kind of struggled. So that was the story for uh, week six. And by the way, that's the second time in three weeks our fantasy star has been a guy who played against the Saints a couple weeks ago is Justin Jefferson. So it's... um. That Saints defense has got some work to do in the secondary. I know they're beat up, but uh, we'll we'll see if if the Cardinals cut them apart. Then you know you've got some problems because the Cardinals are are really struggling. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. sure. And they, uh, you know, with the new all the new additions there, it's going to be interesting. But uh, for fantasy, though, I I like Kyler Murray this week because the Saints struggle against mobile QBs. Yeah, and he's been he's been struggling a little bit, so you might be able to. Um, to uh, sneak a start in on him or maybe even trade for him if you uh, are struggling at QB and see if you can get a second-half bounce back. Other guys to pick up, uh, speaking of quarterbacks, 
Matt Ryan, you mentioned him. And then a couple of guys at the bottom of this list, Alec Pierce and Daniel Bellinger, have both been on your list before. So Spencer told you. A couple mm-hmm. weeks later, they're a little bit higher owned, but you can still get either one of these guys, Pierce or Bellinger, in most leagues. Yeah, yeah. one I'm really pounding the table for is Alec Pierce. This is the third week in a row I've had him on this list, yet he's still rostered, still rising under 30% of leagues. It blows my mind. All that guy does is put up double-digit fantasy points each week. I, I know he's a rookie, but he's showing that he, the future is now for him. He's not just a dynasty stash. He's a he's a solid flex play, so, so please pick him up if you haven't already because he's he's showing that he's a, he's a staple in what's become a pretty pass-heavy attack there with Jonathan Taylor not really having the year we were expecting. And then Latavius Murray's another one after last night's show. And I'd say if you need a running back, he's a must-add because with Russell Wilson far from cooking, they're going to have to rely on the run and Murray somebody that – I mean, he's not going to put up pretty production as far as catching a lot of passes, but he'll grind out those early down yards and probably score a touchdown or two a lot of weeks. And you, you've been pretty low on Melvin Gordon – all year long, he he continues oh, yeah. to get carries. Um, even when Javante Williams was healthy, Melvin Gordon getting carries, but you can kind of see that starting to to trend down. Oh yeah, he, he got benched last night. He was just standing there for the whole second half, like looking looking like dumbfounded. Which I mean, Nathaniel Hackett's an idiot. To I me, mean, they should have at least played him a little bit here and there. He's got to be better than Mike Boone, but that's that's a whole nother discussion. Man, the Denver, Denver Broncos, Broncos oh yeah, God. what a mess. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm toward the, you and I both are toward the end of our survivor pools, and a yeah. lot of people—not a lot of people, but a decent chunk—had picked the Chargers last night, and the Broncos are just giving that game away. Uh, was was frustrating to watch, but that's what we call in the business a segue to Spencer's "You Gotta Go" segment because the first name listed here, was, yeah, the Russell Wilson and Melvin Gordon. Right, yeah, to me, just you can't trust these guys anymore, especially Russ. You know, Russ is just. A, QBs are, I know there's some good ones on by, but there's got to be better options than Russell Wilson. I mean, he look, I don't know if he, I think a lot of it has to do with he's injured. Because I can't believe his play has gone that bad. Like, he's, he's got to be hurt. But if he's hurt that bad, he needs to sit. You know, like Jameis Winston's been doing with the Saints, sit, rest up. I know he's the $250 man or whatever, but you're, you're hurting your team right now. He, he's, so for fantasy, definitely, just he can't trust that. And Melvin Gordon, after getting benched last night, he's looking like he's falling to third on the depth chart. They can't have a third string running back on your fantasy team. Same thing with Cam Akers. He was a healthy scratch, might get traded. And even if he does get traded, I don't see him having much value because the Rams are a good offense. If he can't thrive with the Rams, then I don't know what's the deal. And then Elijah Moore, no targets this week. Very concerning there. Yeah, speaking of Cam Akers, it used to be uh, sort of this theory in sports that if you had an Achilles, that was a long-term thing and you might never be the same. And Kobe Bryant and some other guys kind of changed that a little bit. Say, oh, yeah, you can come back from an Achilles. But I still think there's certain cases, and it it may be too early to say that Cam Akers is for sure one of these cases, but he does not look the same as he did pre-injury, and it's now been more than a year. Yeah, and then even James Robinson, I know he got off to the hot start, but the past few weeks, he's stunk. You know, yeah, coming off an Achilles, that's a brutal, brutal injury. That's about the worst injury possible for, a, for an NFL athlete. So it's there's no surprise that those guys are struggling. Acres, though, it has occurred like really early in the offseason in 2021. So I had some more hope for him as opposed to Robinson, but he's he's just been awful. And apparently it's become a like a personal rift between him and the Rams because he would have, I'm sure, would have been active if not for that. But apparently he's not happy and wants out of there. I need you to keep throwing my two yards per carry out there, Coach. I'm upset. <laughs> that's yeah, I, don't, I guess. I mean, he's that's, not producing. Yeah, you exactly. You don't produce. That's, That's why, why even he if he get traded, I, I don't want him on my team. Who are they going to trade him to? Uh, I don't know. He can't really trade him to the 49ers. That's a division. Let's just say for the purposes of this exercise, that's where he goes, the 49ers. I don't want him there. I, mean, I don't see where he's any better than Jeff Wilson. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Uh, Josh asked, should I trade Drake London for Damian yeah. Pierce? I would say yes. It depends yeah. a little bit on the construction of your team, but I think Pierce Pierce more valuable right now. Oh, most definitely, because Atlanta 
Atlanta's a, a run first offense and Houston's becoming a run first offense. So of course I'm gonna want the the running back in a run first offense on which there's very few offenses these days that that trust a bell cow running back, but the Texans seem to be one of those throwbacks that's that's doing that. And Atlanta, they yeah, they run a lot, but it's more of a two headed monster and but I mean, we're talking about Drake London here. It's it's really hurt Drake London. He got off to a hot start, thinking he might have a nice rookie year. But the way things are trending, I don't think he's someone you can trust. Uh, Uncle Big Nick says CMC is going to the Niners. Ooh, uh, that, those nice. have been the rumors. I I don't think it's confirmed. It's yeah, Uncle no, Big Nick, if that's like confirmed. <laughs> tell us because we missed that. But but I don't I don't think it's confirmed. But I have heard those rumors and certainly would would uh, be very helpful for San Francisco. Oh, that'd be uh, insane. They need, need a CMC, Debo, IU, Kittle. Kittle. They, Jimmy G could stink and he'd still be good because all those players, and their defense is good. Yeah, Jim can say what he wants, but you be in. Don't worry about your Niners. They're going to be okay. Just, you just run the Wildcat with Debo and McCaffrey back there and run like a read option. Yeah, and, and they are just rumors at this point. But, yeah, the, they have been swirling, and they've got the draft pick capital. Like, the Rams couldn't get McCaffrey. They don't have the draft picks. But the Niners could, potentially. Um, and that would, that would really swing the balance in the NFC, I feel like. So, something to keep an eye on. I uh, want to move on and talk some Week 7 DFS. Spencer, here are your best buys for the week. Yeah, go with a, a super deep dive at quarterback this week, Davis Mills. But it's because he's going against the Raiders, and I feel like the game script could play in his favor. Where if the Raiders get off to the early lead, that could force the Texans to throw, in which case Davis Mills could put up some good garbage time numbers and be a, a solid play there. And and it's like you could stack the rest of your team. By taking a quarterback that cheap, you could stack you know running backs, receivers. You could put Kelsey in there. Just have a whole bunch of studs. And as long as Mills delivers like, 15, 20 points, you can still have a shot with, uh, with, you know, studs throughout the rest of the deal. And one of those that I really like this week is Josh Jacobs because I think the Raiders are going to score a lot of points on the Texans, and Jacobs has become a workhorse there in Vegas. And then C.D. Lamb, a juicy, juicy matchup against the Lions and should have Dak Prescott back. And then Kyle Pitts uh, showed some promise last week, finally caught a touchdown and has a pretty good matchup this week against Cincinnati. Yep, and uh, th- that, that's one thing about DFS. Look at game scripts because I know oh, yeah. we talk about stacks. Okay, I'm going to stack Davis Mills with Brandon Cooks. Okay, well, you could do that. That's one way to look at it. But you can also go to the other side and say, well, if, if the Raiders have a lead and it's going to force the Texans to throw, which we know is an important thing to look for in a quarterback, what, what are the Raiders going to be doing? They're going to be trying to burn the clock. Texans can't really stop the run. Here goes Jacobs. One game yeah, could yeah. get you uh, a bunch of points there. And so... That's what you really have to do. If you can nail two or three game scripts, um, that, that's how you win or at least place very highly in those GPPs. Um, Spencer, our sleepers for week seven, uh, another quarterback that you like. Right, yeah, Tua. Tua Tagovailoa is supposed to be back this week and draws a nice matchup against Pittsburgh. I know Tom Brady struggled against him, but that, that's a Tom Brady issue. I think that's more has to do with – Tom Brady being in a funk, and it has to do with the Steelers being good on defense. The Steelers have been pretty consistently bad against the pass this year. And the Dolphins, even without Tua, still had a pretty solid passing game to where with him set to return, assuming he's 100%, which I believe he will be, and they're going to be extra cautious. They wouldn't be taking him out of protocol unless they're 100% sure that he'll be ready. So with all that factoring in, I think he'll have a, a huge week this week against Pittsburgh. Man, I think you're on mute still, Zach. Sorry about that. I I, I think I'm um I'm going with the rookie receiver from Green Bay, Romeo Dobbs, because I Green Bay's got nobody healthy to catch passes. They're going up against Washington. It's essentially a must win for this team. I know it's been ugly, um, but but I do think they're going to throw the ball quite a bit, and I like the idea of Dobbs having having maybe kind of a breakout game. All in with Dobbs this week. I could maybe see it. You know, I just with the way Green Bay's passing game's been going, it's hard for me to trust anyone there outside of Lazard and, and maybe Robert Tunyon. I mean, Dobbs, though, is somebody that I feel like it's kind of risky, but he, he could end up really good. I just I feel like, though, the target share isn't 
quite high enough for me to feel confident. I, I believe he did get nine targets last week, but only four catches. So they are oh, going okay. to him. Uh, you, you know, and again, that's why he's a sleeper. It's a yeah. like low price DFS or a bye week fill in that type of thing. Uh, but he is there. So that's uh, that's our take in football. Ask uh, ask any more questions if you have them. Uh, Nick says, what about Heineke? How do you like Taylor Heineke this week in a DFS scenario? Yeah, he's interesting. I thought about maybe going with him as a cheap option. I'm just I'm thinking of that Green Bay bounces back this week. Like I just their their defense is I feel like better than it's been the past couple weeks. And like even like I mean, Zach Wilson didn't do anything last week. It was all the running game. I mean, Daniel Jones didn't do much against him. It's not like their defense has been getting lit up. So I, I personally wouldn't want Heineke this week. Yeah, Green Bay is um, a pr- pretty good secondary. I don't think they get enough credit for that, but they do have a good secondary out there. So I would be careful with Heineke as well. Uh, Want to pivot here for the last 10 minutes or so. And um, we note that the NBA season starts tonight here in about three and a half hours. Exciting time. Spencer, you and I had our draft on Sunday. Yeah. Um, and so we want to go through your positional rankings here. And first up, oh, actually, I'm sorry. We got to do our listener league. Um Almost forgot. Listener League, Bucktown Rebel is 6-0. and Hat tip to you, sir. Oh, um, man, yeah. I was his latest victim this week. My goodness, this team is, is so loaded, man. It's, it's it's wild. I tried to make a trade with him a couple weeks back, but let's just say he did not want any part of it. And I don't blame the man. I mean, he's undefeated, kicking everybody's butt. So, I mean, hey, if you want to trade, though, hit me up. I'm always down to trade. I've got some good pieces, man. I got CMC Chubb at Barkley. So even though my team's struggling, it's not like not like my team's trash. I mean, I've got some quality pieces, but just my receivers, though, I gotta say, I've got a great running back room, and my receivers have not shown out. Then I need I need a better quarterback, man. My I picked up Dak. I'm hoping Dak will help out my QB situation because Matthew Stafford has been trash. And yeah, look away, UB. Speaking <laughs> of trash, last place, Uncle Big Nick. Uh, you know what I'm looking forward to, Spencer. I would love to see, and I, of course, I want to make I want one of those four playoff spots for myself. But I want to see Guru Squad and Boom Down Goes the Guru battling it out for the last playoff spot. Yeah, that'd be interesting. He, he's that's a Tommy. He, he's uh, he's really picked it up lately. He was off the bad start. I was clowning him, but he's won his last two. Now he got the same record. So I'm not sure when we play. Probably pretty soon. So I'm gonna have to defend my honor in that one. <laughs> that will be a true fantasy football rivalry. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I jumped the gun. You're watching Fantasy Roundup. Now we're going to talk some basketball with opening day tonight. The Pelicans open tomorrow night. And by the way, just as a reminder, you can get into a drawing for two free tickets to the Pelicans home opener on Sunday by going to nola.com slash Pels T-I-X um, and making a, signing up for Caesar Sportsbook, making at least a $5 bet by Friday. So you have... A couple of days yet to do that, and you can get those free Pels tickets. We will start with fantasy basketball rankings on the guard side, Spencer. For sure. Yeah, I had to, um, you know, I did it to where some guys have multi-position eligibility, but I made it to where I've just went with each player's primary position. And so, yeah, Luka Doncic mainly playing guard now for the Mavericks, and he's uh, he, he's just elite, man. He's He is uh, him, Jokic, and... Giannis are the clear-cut top three, but as far as guards, uh, Luca's definitely the the top option there. And then uh, John ja Morant and Trey Young have really just, they've established themselves as superstars, and they're both first-round picks, I'd say. And then of course the salty veteran still in the mix there, Steph Curry and Dame Lillard. The name I'm not quite as high on as the consensus is is Lamelo Ball. Everyone loves Lamelo Ball, and rightfully so. He, he's a stud in the making, but I feel like people might be reaching for him a little bit. He's, I mean, he's still very young, might still be a little inconsistent, and he's already battling injuries. He's quest. I think he's out for the opener, they said, to where it's like, I don't know, I just don't feel like he's quite worthy of a first-round pick yet. I'd love him in the second, but for my first-round pick, I don't think I could trust him yet. And same goes with Tyrese Halliburton. He's another one that's really rising up. He tends to go later, though, so I would – from a value perspective, prefer Halliburton and then uh, Bo- Booker and Kate Cunningham studs. Uh, Deontay Murray, I know Murray went to the Hawks, but he's uh, he's still a stud. One name I have to ask you about who's not on that list, um, who's ADP. These ADPs, by the way, are from ESPN. 
his ADP is well within that sort of top 25 range, but you don't have him in your top 10, would be a Philly's own James Harden. Yeah, I didn't put the beard on there. I was close to putting him, and I was like, I just couldn't because with the 76ers, he's had a reduced role, and I don't see that change. You know, he's more of a facilitator. Right? He's, he'll still put up double doubles, being that he averages like 10 assists a game now, but. As far as fantasy, without he's not getting the volume of scoring that he once did. So I, it was really close for me between him and Deontay Murray. But I went with Murray because I feel like he's still got untapped potential. Harden's kind of on the back nine of his career where Murray's just coming into his own, I feel. Maybe get that, uh, that pick. I still think Harden will put up some good numbers, though, if you can get a value on him. Moving on to forwards, um, we see a familiar name there for Pelicans fans, Zion Williamson. This is where a, a couple of real fantasy stars reside, though. A couple of guys in Duran and James who have been top 10 picks basically their entire careers, and Giannis as well. Right, yeah, I know the, the forwards landscape isn't quite as top-heavy as it used to be. Normally you have like five or six elite forwards that would go in the first round, but this year it's a little different. Giannis, Tatum, and KD, probably don't, and then LeBron is still elite, but I feel like with LeBron and even KD, it's kind of hard to trust them as first round picks because they're at an age to where they're great on a per game basis, but they're probably going to miss anywhere from 10 to 20 games due to either, you know, injuries, load management, like to where it's, I mean, it's not as bad as Kawhi Leonard, you know, Kawhi Leonard uh, per game, he's definitely top 10, probably top five, but it, with the load management and coming off an ACL, I want no part of Kawhi Leonard. And I just, I know KD and LeBron are still, like I said, they're still elite on per game, but I just, they're hard to trust. And then DeMar DeRuz and Paul George, a couple other veterans in the mix, but they're, they're better values for sure. I could see myself targeting them in the third round potentially. And then Zion, I know Zion's got the injury concerns, but, man, on a per-game basis, this dude's got first-round pick potential. So he went a little too high in our league, Zach. But if Zion would fall to the third or maybe fourth round and give him to me there all day. I, I couldn't believe how early he went. I went looking for him in, like, the third round thinking I was going to reach for him. And it's like, he's already gone. Yeah, he went in the <laughs> second. I was like, okay, all right. Well, I guess I'll be without him then. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can McCollum have him if you're going to take him in the second. I, I, yeah. I do think one thing to keep an eye out for is is how your league is structured. If it's you know if it's a category league, you, you need those guys who are going to be in there every day. If it's a points league and you have a pretty deep bench, kind of like our league is set up, the per game becomes more important because there aren't that many nights when every team on your every guy on your roster is going to be playing. And so if you can mm -hmm. take the guys who are benched and you can just move them in and out of your lineup and still rack up points and have them when they do play. Um, that, that can be more valuable than it would be otherwise, I feel like. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the whole, yeah, cause, yeah and I'll draft the pick that I, I can't say I regretted it because, I mean, this guy's got a got a still uh, got some untapped potential. But, like, I know, like, his per game wasn't quite as good as I thought was the uh, young Raptors forward, Scotty Barnes. Like, I think he's going to be nice this year, but I may have took him a little too high because, yeah, on a per game, he's not quite as good. He'd probably be better suited for a categories league, but hopefully he can – you know, keep putting up numbers, but yeah, just, but that is a good point. Got to, uh, in leagues like this, like ours is more probably like KD and, and LeBron would still be first rounders, but as far as categories, yeah, I want no part of those guys. Yeah. yeah. Finally, centers, uh, Nikola Jokic, still the, maybe not consensus top pick because I think sometimes Giannis gets picked first too, but still the top dog in fantasy, uh, Joel oh, yeah. Embiid. And then it, it really with centers, Okay, we'll say we'll put Cat in that category, and then it drops off a little bit. If you don't get one of those top three, um, you can probably wait a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I was glad to get Embiid in ours. I had fifth pick. I was thinking I was good because to me there was a clear cut top four: Jokic, Giannis, uh, Doncic, and Embiid. So I was thinking, man, if I don't get one of those four, I don't know who I'm going to go with. But Embiid fell, and so I got him there at five. But yeah, Cat's strong, and then but yeah, outside of him, yeah, AD, yeah, a lot of people are down on AD, but I'm thinking he might have a, a little bit of a bounce back this year. I know he's another one that's probably going to miss games, but with LeBron getting older, AD's going to have to shoulder more of a load there for the Lakers. So I'm I'm thinking he's actually become a pretty good value. Same with Sabonis, who's a, he's actually a king now. Uh, who's a, he should be the primary oh, option yeah, for the Kings. Team. Yeah, he's uh, he. I got him in our league in the third round, and I think he's gonna really do well. Also eligible at power forward, him and Pascal Siakam similar. And then the name 
like to address here is a Rudy Gobert. I'm kind of down on him compared to the consensus. Cause I think with Cat, him and Cat teaming up, I think, I mean, we're not exactly sure how it's going to play out, but I think Cat's going to still get his or Gobert with Anthony Edwards there too. Like Gobert's scoring is probably going to be even more limited than it was in Utah. All right. So basketball season starts tonight. Plenty of DFS to play there as well, or you can still get in on season long drafts, I'm sure, for the rest of the week. You're watching the Fantasy Roundup on bet.noah.com, brought to you by Caesar Sportsbook. We'll wrap things up with a few questions we've got here. Back to football. Uh, Karis says he traded Aaron Jones and Lockett for Jonathan Taylor and Claypool before week six. Claypool is a surprise. Will Taylor be a game changer? I mean, I think you got the better end of that deal so long as Taylor does come back. Yeah, I think yeah, so. I think, I think he'll come back. Maybe not this week, but probably the week after. And if he's healthy, yeah, he's a game changer, huge upgrade over Aaron Jones. And that was actually a pretty fair deal because I think Lockett rest of season is better than Claypool, but that's a small sacrifice considering you're getting the, the best player in the deal there in JT. I'm guessing, Karis, you're probably in pretty good shape in the standings. That's that's when you can afford to make a deal. Hey, I'll wait three weeks for Jonathan Taylor to come back, and then I'll have a better team in the playoffs. All right, Forrest says he has – Let's see. He has Moffitt in Miami. I'm not sure I understand what that uh, said. Oh, oh, CEH. CEH. Oh, CEH. Okay. Oh, Mostert. 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 Would you tra- okay. would you trade to get the running back Walker in Seattle? Who would? You oh trade? yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I mean, if you can, I don't know if anybody will do it. Yeah, I like yeah, Walker like over Mostert and CEH. I mean, you can maybe even flip both of them for him because I'd rather, I'd flip two mediocre runners for a runner. That I feel like Walker at this point, someone you can trust as a excuse me every week starter. Yeah, I agree, and I th- I think if I'm the Walker owner, I'm not doing that deal. But that doesn't mean the Walker worth owner. A try. Yeah, the Walker owner in your league might. And finally, Jason, full PPR, Jimmy or Tua? I'm going Tua there. Yeah, and a flex, sure. Olave, Lazard, or Keenan Allen. Olave is a go. He said that. Um, but, you know, Keenan Allen probably is the highest ceiling there. If, but, Yeah, we don't know. So I'd go, I'd go Olave because with Keenan Allen, a hamstring, it's been a – must have been a more severe hamstring strain than we thought because he's been out now like a month. So we don't know what to expect of him. Give me Olave there. He should do well with Thomas and Landry likely out again. Yeah, I mean, the issue there is Olave plays Thursday, and so I think you have to pull the trigger on that. Unless Keenan Allen, let's say he's a full practice participant Wednesday and Thursday, you know, maybe then you roll the dice that he's going to be ready. But I, I don't see that happening. I mean, he hasn't practiced in a couple of weeks now, so I would I would go Olave unless you get some sort of assurance that, that Keenan Allen is going to start. Yeah, uh, even I think then I'd be a little him. nervous because, of, you know, with hamstrings, no, he's had plenty of time to heal, so he probably wouldn't re-aggravate it. But, I mean, you never know. Watch, he comes back and boom, he re- injures it. So, I would, uh, yeah, I definitely would go Olave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think that'll do it for us, Spencer, unless you have anything else for uh, week seven to come or the way this season is going. All right, yeah, I mean, I think a good way to end it, you know, had a – Appreciate all the audience participation today. Had a lot of questions, and yeah, we're always here. You know, social media at Spencer the Guru, Instagram, Twitter. We got you over there on there as well. Later in the week, if y'all have last minute questions, but uh, but yeah, good show as always. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. Uh, one more reminder: we're brought to you by Caesar Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up yet, you can do so. Enter for some LSU tickets against Alabama. Use. Uh, the URL nola.com slash LSU tickets, spell out tickets for that one. Or if you prefer to enter for the Pelicans home opener, um, that would be nola.com slash Pels ticks, just T-I-X on that one. Got to sign up and make a $5 bet sometime this week on anything. And you might win the bet and then you get money and you get entered for the draw. It's a good deal. Um, So check that out. And in the meantime, Spencer and I will be back on Thursday for Bayou Bets at 4 o'clock. Jim will probably yell at us about something. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll talk Saints. Get Cardinals. Off my lawn. That's right. Well, um, he'll he'll be he'll be mad about something. Somebody will go for it on fourth down, and his <laughs> like his antenna will perk up, and it'll it, yeah. That's that's how that'll go. So we'll see you at four o'clock on Thursday. Until then, everybody, thanks for watching the fantasy roundup.